I built me and my instincts are to always lead and protect. Everybody knows that except you. I'm not going to stand by and watch you hurt this family again. It's not going to happen. Now, Lorenzo is a character who always talks about family. He makes a point about how it's all his family first, whether he's with Drew, Diana, Kane, or Monet. For him, he definitely feels it's his duty to protect his family as the leader of the Tejada household. But every leader has their pros and cons, which is something we're going to get to later on, because Lorenzo definitely has his flaws, as does everybody else. But in contrast to Lorenzo, Monet was someone who was making decisions in season 2. She made plans for the future that didn't even include Lorenzo or Kane. But despite everything that's happened between Kane and Lorenzo so far in Season 3, he still pushed Kane out the way to safety and put himself in the firing line in the fear shootout that we saw in Episode 4. Now that definitely put a lot of things into perspective for Kane. Despite him making some game-changing moves that made him the shot caller for the Tejadas, you can't doubt Lorenzo's intentions, even if he does make some impulsive decisions. And I really do feel the writers did a great job in proving Lorenzo right and humbling Kane, just like Woody McLean mentioned in one of his interviews before Go Season 3. But on the flip side, this is why I think the writing is on the wall for Lorenzo. Just when he thinks his secret is safe with Kane, Davis uncovered some crucial evidence which will completely shift the dynamics with the Tejada house. And we all know Monet, she's not playing games in Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3. Now, just as a brief overview of Lorenzo's history, we were introduced to the head of the Tejada family in prison in Season 1. The reason why he was in prison was because he was convicted of first-degree murder in a unanimous jury decision, but the trial was a rocky one with missing witnesses along with the mysterious death of a lawyer. Ironically, we had Tariq googling the history of Lorenzo in Season 1 just like we had Salim doing in Season 3, but Tariq had other reasons of course. Now, even though it seemed like Monet was in charge on the outside, Lorenzo was actually the shot caller from the inside. He said that Drew was the right one to eventually take over, for as long as the streets feared Kane, that's the position he should play, and Diana should be at school. Now, during this meeting with Kane in Season 1, Lorenzo lied to Kane, and I feel him lying to Kane, along with having it beat up in prison, definitely changed their relationship. When he was released, we saw the family over the moon, apart from Monet. And as weird as it sounds, I do think Monet preferred Lorenzo being inside, because she was able to keep Drew, Kane, and Diana in positions she felt was best for the family. Now, this began to change as soon as Lorenzo was released. He told Monet to take a step back, sent Diana to college, and made Drew his right-hand man, which of course, infuriated Kane because he said he needed to learn from Monet, so when the time was right, he could one day take over. I'm trying to give you this game, so you can sustain and put Diana and Kane in position, so you can run this shit. Now at this moment in time, Kane was in the position of power until Mecca said otherwise, and we saw Lorenzo making Drew his right hand. But how Diana is very similar to Monet, Kane and Lorenzo definitely share a lot of similar traits as well. One of them making impulsive decisions without thinking, basically pulling the trigger first and thinking later, something Monet made reference to in Season 1. And we saw exactly that as Lorenzo pulled the trigger on Zeke, thinking it was Mecca, because he believed it was his duty to protect his family. But in doing so, not only did he kill Monet's firstborn, he left some evidence at the scene of the crime. So as we entered Season 3, Lorenzo's been in desperation mode after the events of Season 2. Monet's after the man that murdered Zeke, and he was the one that was tasked in finding the man behind the trigger. And if I were Lorenzo, the first thing I would definitely have done was dealt with Mecca's pilots. Lorenzo asked Kane to go and find the killer, but in doing so, he left a wake of evidence, which actually hi highlighted Lorenzo's flaws. He really didn't think through his plan to the end, and he made yet another desperate attempt by having his own son jumped by a guap, and this was to try and cover his tracks, but Kane definitely wasn't buying it. Kane is someone who's shown he's a lot more strategic this season compared to seasons 1 and 2, and he's actually taking a step back and thinking a lot more, and being under the guidance of Mecha for a season, no doubt helped him develop as a character. He found the pilots which gave him the information that the killer was bold with a dark jacket and a broken taillight. And when he found the guap, he checked Zeke's IG and he found out he never actually wore his championship ring. And Lorenzo's face said it all during this meeting with the family and also when the guap said he was paid to jump Drew. So when Kane found out the truth, he turned from Lorenzo Tejada Jr. into Lorenzo Tejada Sr. And he was the man in charge. But you weren't ready for me. And now that I know the truth, I fucking own you! So Kane's been leading the Tarda organization for the past two episodes, but that raised question with Drew, Diana, and Monet, and that definitely can't go unnoticed. They all know how Lorenzo would never jump when Kane says jump, but all of a sudden, he is. And sooner or later, they're definitely going to question why. But the gun deal that went sideways showed why Kane was never ready to be the leader of the Tarda organization, even if he has shown he's a lot more strategic this season. Lorenzo knew they were sitting ducks at the motel room, and they had to move, which is why he called Drew for backup, again, highlighting why he wants Drew to take over the Tejada organization and not Kane. 
But in this shootout, Lorenzo pushing Kane out the way completely flipped Kane's perception of his father and he began to realize Lorenzo will always do what he can to protect his family even if Kane was blackmailing him. Now, this moment they had between them just had Lorenzo's death written all over it and I think the funeral scene that we see in the official trailer pretty much confirms Lorenzo's time is almost up. Kane is wearing Lorenzo's chain. We also see the Castillo brothers at the funeral as well as Kai holding the casket who we were introduced to in episode 1, someone who was said to have grown up under the guidance of Lorenzo. We also know that Lorenzo's funeral is going to be interrupted by a drive-by and I'm going to come to some theories in just a moment. But something I think we do have to highlight is how Lorenzo wanted Drew as a leader of the Tard organization, which is until Kane strategically put himself in position using Zeke's death. And when it is revealed that Lorenzo was behind Zeke's death, because it is going to happen after the latest revelation, Monet will see Kane for what he is. Yeah, he may show traits out that he's family first, but at the end of the day, he kept the secret for his own selfish gain to get leverage over Lorenzo and lead the Tardor organization. So when this secret does eventually come to light, not only will this cause a friction between Kane and Monet, but it's also going to prove what she said at the beginning of season 3 to be true and what Tariq has been saying since season 1. Tariq saying Patrick is the only one she can trust. And if you think about why Kane has his hatred for Tariq, it's because he's the son Monet's always wanted. But can we really blame Monet when all the Tahadas have their own agendas who are out for their own selfish gain? Now here's the fun part, some theories around who could kill Lorenzo and why. And as always, the comment section is always open to your perceptions. Now something I think we have to talk about is how Monet asked Kane to kill Lorenzo at the end of season 2, albeit a fake plan. Kane wasn't capable of pulling the trigger, he froze and hesitated in doing something Tariq did in power, which highlights one huge difference between the two. Tariq is a real killer, not that Kane isn't, but it does take some balls to kill your own father. Now with Monet closing in on the truth with the help of Tariq St. Patrick, could she be the one to pull the trigger on Lorenzo herself? She made it known that she wanted to pull the trigger on the man who put the bullet on Zeke. But something we have to bear in mind is, Monet will tell Lorenzo to leave New York and get out of her house. So although Monet is the logical choice, I'm not 100% convinced it's going to be Monet. But what about the Castillos? I don't think we clipped Uncle Frank. We don't know what she's feeding her sons. We can't trust them. Ma, they don't know anything. They would have retaliated. What if they just trying to get close enough to prove it before they make a move? Now it was very convenient that Evelyn came back into the picture and told Monet, her sons have a foothold in Brooklyn something that Kane used to expand their territory. But that's not the only clue that we should be careful of when it comes to the Castillos. Evelyn warned Monet in season 2, Lorenzo better watch his back, and how she would hate for Monet to be in the same position as she is, basically without a husband and a father for her kids. And this is one of the many reasons why I said Drew needs to be careful when it comes to Gordo. Could Gordo be getting close to Drew just to get revenge for Uncle Frank? So the Castillos for me are definitely in the equation. Now we all know how much Kane loves asking Brayden to kill and after he found out he didn't kill the Russian connect as well as Lauren, he made it clear that he still owes him a body and he is going to come back and collect. So with Moni asking Kane to kill Lorenzo once before, albeit a fake plan, could we see Moni asking Kane to do it once again? But with Kane knowing that he can't pull the trigger, could he ask Brayden to kill his father instead? Brayden's first kill is definitely coming and Kane will definitely come back and collect. So could he be a changed man after what happens to him in Italy in episode 5? Now, if this scene in the trailer with someone holding a knife is Lorenzo's death, then we might actually see Lorenzo being absolutely butchered to death. And the direction that season 3 has been going in, I really wouldn't be surprised if we see one of the most brutal kills in Power Book 2 goes so far. So just something else to think about, but we don't know who's behind this knife and whose blood this is. But if it is Lorenzo's, we're about to see him being butchered. So that's the story of Lorenzo Tejada, one which I expect to end in episode 5. But how if we do see his death, it's going to cause a huge power struggle within the Tejadas. Drew and Kane will definitely be in for a battle with the throne, but this is where Monet needs to step up and take control and Tariq St. Patrick will definitely play his role. But drop all your thoughts down below on who you think could end Lorenzo. Could it be the Castillos? Could it be the Russians? Could it be Brayden? Or could it be Monet herself? Or even a wildcard theory, could it be Drew? Drop all your thoughts and theories down below and as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.